Good morning. Well, it's a cold morning here in Patrick County. In fact, by the time you listen to this devotion, there may well be a wintry mix uh, on the ground. Uh, if there is, please be careful, folks. Well, today we're looking at Psalm 25, and it's a rather lengthy psalm, and I hope you'll read it in its entirety later today. But for the purpose of our devotion, I'm just going to read uh, the first five verses. Listen to God's word. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Well, Psalm 25 is an acrostic, which means each verse of the psalm begins with a successive letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Verse one begins with Olive, verse two with Bet, verse three with Gimel, and so forth. Now, Psalm 25 is not a perfect acrostic. A couple Hebrew letters are omitted, one is repeated, but generally speaking, it follows the acrostic pattern. By the way, there are nine such acrostics in the Psalter, and the most polished of which is Psalm 119, which has 22 stanzas, each stanza featuring a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. James Montgomery Boyce, in his commentary, offers several reasons why an acrostic may have been used by the psalmist. Uh, number one, it may have been an artistic device used to add beauty to the psalm. Number two, an acrostic may indicate that the subject is being covered completely from A to Z, as we might say, or from Aleph to Tav, as the Hebrew might say. This is especially true of Psalm 119 with its 176 verses. But an acrostic may have also been a mnemonic device uh, designed to assist the young in memorizing or learning the Psalms. And this latter reason is certainly applicable to Psalm 25, because as we'll see, the overall theme of Psalm 25 is learning. Well, anyway, let's turn to the Psalm. Psalm 25 opens with an affirmation of trust. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. It continues verse three. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. The psalmist, King David, trusts in the Lord. He believes that he stands firm with the Lord. But here's what he also seems to understand. That if he's going to continue to stand firm with the Lord, the Lord must teach him. God must instruct him. God must show David God's ways. Uh, verses 4 and 5. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day long. David wants to know God's ways. He wants to know the truth of scripture. But catch this. He doesn't want it just for knowledge's sake. He says, teach me your past. Lead me in your truth. David wants to walk with the Lord. David apparently understands this truth. Knowledge of God's way is intended to direct our way. Knowledge of God is not merely intellectual assent to truth. Knowledge of God impacts how we live moment by moment, or at least it should impact how we live moment by moment. If you go on to read Psalm 25, you find great characteristics of God. For example, God is merciful and loving in verse six. God is good and upright in verse 8. God is loving and faithful in verse 10. He's forgiving in verse 11. He's gracious in verse 16. It's wonderful to know these truths about God. Knowing his mercy and love and faithfulness and forgiveness is a blessing. But knowing these characteristics, we're also called to be merciful and forgiving and gracious and loving and faithful to all the people we encounter. Continue to read through this psalm today and meditate on its truths. May you come to know the Lord's ways and may he teach you his paths and lead you in his truth. 
May the knowledge of our Lord impact how you live. May God's way direct your way. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for being faithful and loving and merciful and gracious and forgiving. Thank you for all of those blessings and many more. Thank you that those who trust in you can indeed stand firm. And Lord, continue to teach us your ways as we ponder this great psalm and every word that proceeds from you. May we increase in knowledge of you, knowledge of your truth and your ways. And Lord, grant us much more than knowledge. Continue to mold our lives so that we might live according to your way. Oh Lord, change how we live. Change how we interact with others. Make us more like you. Mold us like clay in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, once again, may the Lord teach you his ways and his paths and lead you in his truth. I pray that you have a great and safe and a very Merry Christmas. God bless you. Have a great day. Goodbye.